Sister Beverly asked us to do prayers for Sister Val's husband. I'm going to read Isaiah 53. I had some um, Mark 6 I was going to read, but I'm going to read Isaiah 53. I'm just going to read um, starting on 3, 4, and 5. It okay. says, he is despised and rejected of man, of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So, Heavenly Father God, we come to you now and we bring Sister Val's husband, Roy, that by your stripes he is healed. You have given us the power, Lord God, that we have the power over sickness. And we rebuke sickness now for him in the name of Jesus Christ. We see Roy healed and whole and well. Jesus, you've taken all his pain and all his sicknesses when you died for us on the cross and you gave us your strength. You said when we are weak, you are strong and we take your weakness. And you said where we are gathered together in your name, you're in the midst of us. And so we are gathered now, we are calling upon your name for healing, not just for Roy, but for all of us. We're asking you for traveling mercies for Brother Joel as he travels. We ask you for guidance and wisdom for each one of us present here tonight, for the ones who will come on this meeting. Father God, we ask you to hope to give us wisdom and understanding as we go into your words now. We thank you for all the blessings that you have blessed us with. We thank you for the wisdom and understanding. We thank you for guidance and protection. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we come in your holy name. Amen. It's God. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, yeah, let's 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 do a little prayer chain there. So Sister Monica. Yeah, next in the in the chain, Sister Monica. Okay. Okay. Mm. Heavenly Father. Mighty God, your healer, your protector, your creator, the giver of salvation. You love us so much, even when we fail you, that you gave your only son to pay for our sins. Thank you, Father. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Father. We cannot worship you enough. We don't have time to tell you thanks. Mm. We lift up your name, O oh God. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for salvation. We thank you because you said we, we are your own. You call us your children. You love us more than our earthly father. We thank you. We give you the glory daily, yes. Father. Yes. Father, today we come together to worship you, to learn more about you, to get to know you so we can have a closer relationship. Open our minds, oh God, that we can learn more, that we can realize who we are in you, your children, your children. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for your love. Father, we bow our heads as we humbly beseech you to be here with us. We know you're here with us. And we give you the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Sister Sandra, you're next in the chain. Unmute. Okay. What a mighty God we serve, that angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. What a mighty God we serve. Father, we bless your name. We glorify you. We thank you, God, for loving us. 
we thank you for sending your son to die for us so we can have salvation and so we can become the righteousness of god in christ jesus father as we come to you come tonight to study your word i pray mighty god that you will open up our understanding so that we will um grasp whatever is is going to be teach to us tonight father we pray that you will let the word of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you tonight help us not to lean on our own understanding but as we come tonight mighty god we we come acknowledging that you is our only hope you are our source we have no one else but you mighty god you are our conqueror you are our deliverer our redeemer our shepherd our all in all and so father tonight we just come to you knowing that you are with us and so because you are with us nothing that will come upon us will um ever win we know you are the winner man every time in jesus name we pray with thanksgiving amen, amen. okay sister beth father god i give you praise tonight lord i thank you and i worship you god for who you are thank you lord god that you are our peace oh god that passes all understanding mm -hmm. father god i pray lord your peace tonight upon sister valerie upon her two sons god upon roy lord i stand in agreement lord we stand in agreement father god be knowing god that you are our healer lord that you are the lord that healed us lord as you touch Roy's body tonight, Lord, we pray for complete healing, oh God, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Father God, at every organ and cell, every blood vessel, yes. Lord God, every artery, Father God, behold, mm. in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, for your covering upon us tonight, God, upon our minds, Father God, upon in our spirit, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen us, oh God, in our inner man, Father God, give us understanding, Lord, as we sit and we we listen to the word, God, as we we take the word, oh God, and apply it to our lives, our everyday lives. Father God, I pray, Lord, that we will continue as we continue, Lord, to walk in you, God, and continue to do your will, Father God, and your word. I pray, Lord God, your hands upon us, Lord, your blessings upon us, Father. I give you praise tonight and honor you and worship you in jesus name amen 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 sister yolanda sister yolanda are you there okay all right so we give god thanks another monday night yes and Okay, we give God thanks for another Monday night. Um, sorry to hear that Sister Val's husband is sick and in the hospital, but we know that God is able to do abundantly above all that we can ever think or ask. And the provision has already been made for our healing. And so we thank God for giving us the ability to to access what he has blessed us with in Jesus name. Hebrews chapter four, we are now, we're still talking about, about um, prayer and, and we want to look at some basic conditions, some basic conditions for, for getting our prayers answered. Um, I, I find it very interesting because my lead my lead um scripture i and i was meditating on it and and i and i noticed that um sister angela i think she's in california <laughs> she, she put up that lead scripture yesterday and i just had to say my goodness god has a way of letting us know how how we should go you know he he operates that way operates that way with confirmation let us look at hebrews 4 from verse 14 and we're talking about basic conditions to get our prayers answered <clears throat> now i am going to be reading from the amplified version All right 
and the, and it, it is very similar to how it is in the King James, except that it it uh, expands on it a little more. In as much then, in as much then, as we have a great high priest. Now, what is interesting here is that born again Christians just like under the old covenant have a high priest but you notice now that what verse what verse are you reading from verse 14. so we're in the new covenant now where hebrews the the book of hebrews is letting us know that we who are new covenant people no longer under the old covenant we have a great high priest now think about that we have a great high priest under the old covenant there was a high priest and the high priest's responsibility was to offer sacrifices for the sins of the people and there was actually a day of atonement you know when the when sacrifice was offered to cover the sins of the people for an entire year now their sins were co were were covered they were not they were not they were not forgiven like today they were covered by the blood of animals it was it was that was how god dealt with sin under the old covenant so that entire system has been annulled and now we have a brand new covenant and in this new covenant our high priest was the sacrifice and he paid one sacrifice once and for all to cover the sins of the entire world so we don't have to be sacrificing animals anymore and another thing is that now that now that we have this this high priest our sins are forgiven and they have been removed as far as the east is from the west the east and the west could never touch so we have been removed so far away from our sins because they have been forgiven but we have a high priest a great high priest hebrews is referring to him as and he's saying here that he has already ascended and passed through the heavens. Now, in order for him to ascend, he must have been on earth, right? So he, he sacrificed on earth, obeying his father's will. And now he ascends to heaven. And he is... He is now our high priest. But listen to what the Hebrews is saying. So he has already ascended and passed through the heavens, and we know who he is because the next, the next, the next clause is saying that it is Jesus, the Son of God. So our our great high priest is Jesus, the Son of God. And listen to what he's saying now. So he's saying, let us hold fast our confession and it is our confession of faith in him so so then the question is and we can't move on until we understand what is our confession of faith in this high priest sister monica i, I noticed you're talking but we're not hearing you that Jesus is Lord, he's the Christ, that he died for us. Well, that, that's, that's a part of it. But, but yes, that is, that is it. That is, that, is, that is a part of it. So basically what is happening here is that like Jesus, like Jesus, our confession should always be what God said, right? 
So it, 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 it the interesting thing about Jesus and our and our and our study is that Jesus is not deviating at all, not moving away from what his father says. So he held his confession, right? He held his confession in his father by saying what his father said. And for us, it is the same thing. It is saying what Jesus said, right? Okay. The next verse says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize. Now, the, 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 the high priests under the old covenant had issues. You know what their issues were? They were human like us mm. who sinned. <laughs> they were human like us who sinned. Jesus paid for the sins of this world. Jesus never sinned, but Jesus was made sin so that he could have for paid us. the sins of this world. So our sins have been taken care of. Our sicknesses have been taken care of. And all of that happened at the same time, mm -hmm. right? For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weakness and infirmities and abilities to the assaults of temptation. So, but he says, one who has been tempted in every aspect as we are, yet he did not sin. See the high priest we have under the old covenant? There was no such high priest. No such high priest. And we know that everybody else except jesus sin because sin. we were all born in sin and shaped iniquities but here is what here is where we get into what the bible the hebrew the bible wants us to do he says let us then fearlessly and bold confidently and boldly let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace. Now, the, thr the throne of grace is God's, um, God's unmerited favor to us sinners. And he's telling us to come boldly to the throne of grace. For what? That we would receive mercy for our failures. So he wants us to come boldly to the throne of grace. Now, 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 now let us, let us examine a little bit the throne of grace. You cannot have a throne without a king. And a king sits on a throne, isn't that right? Okay, but here is a unique throne. And here is a unique king. So let us examine the throne of grace. What is the throne of grace? Let's talk. What is the throne of grace? We know that we know, we know that we know that God Jesus is the king. God is the king. And we're told to come boldly to this throne of grace. What is this thr throne of grace that we, we should come boldly to? To receive mercy for our failures. What is this throne of grace? Mr. Love, I'm going to pick on you. The truth. The throne of grace, you know, I think we, we have an advocate. Uh, we have a high peace with forever so uh and we're giving out the holy spirit I, I would just say let's focus on the throne let's pinpoint the throne look at look at look at queen elizabeth and now king charles sitting on the throne and and look at god sitting on this throne and this throne is referred to as the throne of grace is it salvation Let's talk about we're not talking about we talk about this, the throne of grace. Well, first of all, let us see if we could identify what grace is. 
let us see if we could uh, let's let's take it in, in let's take it in but in bits let's see if we could <laughs> identify what grace what is grace grace is a, a merited uh, okay. a merited favor what does that mean what does that mean like uh, uh, a merited favor like the you know the, the he paid that same grace pay for whatever debt that's whatever. not explaining he, it enough what he does it, not what treat us as grace? we deserve pardon me he and does he, not treat us as we deserve he does not punish um, us as we deserve right we're getting we're getting from god things that we do we not deserve, deserve. Mm -hmm. yes. and things that we cannot work for we well, cannot yeah. work for yeah undeserved favor so the throne of grace the throne of grace has for 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 sinners for sinners because we're coming to the throne of grace to get to find mercy yeah why oh. would somebody need mercy because they did wrong because they did wrong wrong and even though we have done wrong he's saying look come boldly and confidently to the throne of grace where you will find mercy for your failures and not only mercy for your favors but grace grace to help in every time of need so 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 what what are the needs that we generally have yes. sicknesses disease. sicknesses diseases Black. 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 what else can't get along with one another <laughs> what else yeah. jealousy jealousy yeah. Lies. Lies. lots of issues lots of we have envy a lot. so so with all of the problems never in the, with all of yep, the problems the he's telling us problems yeah come boldly and fearlessly come fearlessly confidently and boldly to the throne of grace in this is presence. where you have to come when you have problems in his presence well he didn't say well yes well he's going to be there because that's his yeah, throne but totally focus yeah, on no. the throne focus his on the present throne. and he's present there at the throne come boldly to the throne with all of your problems come now when you when you read this scripture we we, we see how a lot of people are telling us that we gotta come clean. Mm -mm. No, come, so come as you are. Come with your mess is what it is yes. saying here. As you are, yes. And then when you come, that mess is going to be cleansed. Mm -hmm. So you're coming to the throne of grace with all of your concerns, mm -hmm. your needs, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right and that throne of grace so this is where we come to seek, seek an audience with god mm. the throne of grace significant the throne of grace that is where god is and it's telling us sister monica to come boldly fearlessly confidently and when you come with all of your problems with with all of your troubles you're going to find mercy and you're going to find help to meet Christ all of your needs. Time of need. so 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 what the word is telling us is that we have some place to go with our problems mm -hmm. sometimes we seek an audience with people but that is not what hebrews is saying mm -hmm. And look at what the psalmist David is saying here now in Psalms 91 verse 15. He says, he shall call upon me 
and I will answer him. Amen. When we call upon God, he will answer us. Mm -hmm. So now our, 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 our study is on prayer. And I think we're going to be diving into this for a little while because the whole idea is to be able to get our prayers answered. Now, prayer is one of the greatest opportunities. The greatest opportunity we can have is prayer. Mm -hmm. It is also one of the greatest privileges that we can have. What, what is a privilege? And we sing it in the song. What a and what a privilege to carry everything in God in to God in prayer. You know that song? Yeah. What is a privilege? When somebody says you have privilege, you got you're a privileged child. You're 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 privileged. What does that mean? That you're allowed you're allowed. Uh -huh. you're, um. <laughs> you have yeah, but, a, a, a preferential treatment you got preferential treatment if somebody's hand is raised mm -hmm. the unknown hand is raised okay all right oh that's sister Angelina. okay all right so 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 prayer is the greatest privilege mm -hmm. one of the greatest privilege that an individual can have Good night, Sister Angela. Hello. Sister Angela, I was just talking about your confirmation scripture that we led off with tonight. Hebrews 4.16. I have never, I tell you, I have been around for a little while and I've never seen anything like that. Here am I meditating on this scripture for study tonight. And there you went, putting it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you notice I commented. And the reason why I commented was because of that. We give God glory. So prayer is one of the greatest privileges. And hear this now. And prayer is also one of the greatest ministries mm. that is available to all Christians. prayer greatest opportunity greatest privilege greatest ministry available to all christians Great now pardon me i was saying the, the greatest weapon it, well it is a powerful weapon yes so because because we are we are we Prayer keeps us connected to our Heavenly Father, you know. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. In conversation, prayer keeps us there where we are listening to Him. We're listening to Him more so than, 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 than we are talking to Him and telling Him about what we want and all of our desires. All right? Okay. So... We have not read anywhere in scripture, Sister Love, where <clears throat> Jesus actually taught his disciples to preach. But Jesus taught them how to pray. And prayer is something that we all need to learn to do. So I believe that everyone who seeks to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and all of us to desire to take our place in God's kingdom as priests, because that's who we are, we should seek to learn to pray effectively. Now, praying effectively is what the Bible refers to as the fervent prayer of the righteous that avails much. We read that in, 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 in James. So please know that God does not only welcome us to pray. You know what he's also doing? He's waiting on us to come and pray. 
So I'm going to go back now and, and read Hebrews 4.16. <laughs> Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace. I just want you to envision and, and, and envision that throne of grace because you know it's a it's a magnificent place where people are showing up with all of their problems and having their needs met so let us come let us then fearlessly and and confidently and boldly join to the throne of grace the throne of god's unmerited favor for us sinners that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in every time of need so we need to study and learn to apply the conditions that scripture has given us so that we're able to approach god in prayer so that god will give answers to our prayers that is what we're trying to accomplish in our study now there are basic requirements for getting our prayers answered and, and we want to look at some of them and really focus on them so that we can use them. Now, I want you to look at Hebrews 5, 7, because we want to look at what is happening in, in, in Hebrews 5, 7. Now, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up, I'm reading from the NIV, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission so that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at jesus rev reverent submission now the scripture speaks about how jesus prayed during his life on here on earth that's that's the scripture we just read but in the first part of this verse, we see Jesus as an example of a priest and how Jesus offered a praise and petitions to the Father during his earthly ministry. Now, at the end of that same verse there, we are told something else that is very important about prayer. And we are told why God the Father always heard the prayers of Jesus and answered them. The scripture says that Jesus was heard because of his reverent submission. Remember that, reverent submission. So this reverent submission is a requirement for approaching God. As a matter of fact, this is, this is, this is at the top tier of our, of our prayer life. Okay, so how was this reverent submission of Jesus expressed? And as we know, this was expressed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And let us look at it. Matthew chapter 26. And I'm looking, I'm going to read two verses. Verses 39 and 42. And he, Jesus, went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, listen to this now, let this cup pass from me yet not as i will but as you will verse 42 he jesus again went away as a second time and prayed saying my father if this cup cannot pass away unless i drink from it from it your will be done now jesus had his own will and his will was being tested but jesus jesus recognized that he had to submit his will to his father so as as we now understand reverent submission is about agreeing here is what it is it is about agreeing and saying to the father not as i will it is not my will but it is your will so it is God's will that must be done. So reverent submission is renouncing or scrapping our own will 
and embracing the will of God. Now, let us come to Matthew 6. Right? And I'm reading, I'm reading from verse 9. And we know the Lord's prayer. That's what it is. And here, is, here Jesus is teaching them. I'm just going to read two, two verses. Pray then in this way. Here is, you remember the, one of the disciples came to Jesus and asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And they were asking Jesus to teach them to pray because they saw Jesus' successful prayer life. Jesus spent a lot of time praying in the mountains and he would come down, come down into, into the public and he used that power to destroy the works of the devil. So they came to Jesus and asked Jesus, teach us to pray. And then Jesus said, pray then in this way, our father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. We worship and adore you. We respect you. We honor you. You are great. You are mighty. You are powerful. The earth is yours and everything in it, your creator. Hallowed be your name. We respect you. We worship you. And then the next verse says, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is teaching that God's kingdom, to pray for God's kingdom to come, and that it is God's will that will be done on earth. Now, when the kingdom comes to earth, where is that kingdom going to be? Where is that kingdom going to be? In our hearts. In our hearts. So that is where the kingdom of God resides, in our hearts. And it is there for a specific purpose. It is there so that God's will will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. So there, should be, there shouldn't be no difference between what is happening on earth in our lives and what is happening heaven, in heaven. That is what Jesus is saying. And that is why we need to look deep to see how we can unlock these, these we can un unlock all of these, bar remove all of these barriers that are restricting our prayers from being answered. So when we come to God in prayer, we have to be in agreement and say to him, Father, it is your will that must be done. Now, notice that this prayer pattern is really for sons and daughters of God. Eh? So, wherever there is disagreement between our will and God's will, it is the will of God that must be allowed to have free course. Wherever there is a disagreement between our will and God's will, it is God's will that must have free course. Okay. Now, th there is an aspect of our old nature. You know what that old nature is? What is that old nature? Hmm. Yeah. What, what is that old nature? The flesh. I, 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 the flesh. Self the flesh, or the Bible refers to it as self. Self, self. Now, when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, right? For those of us who have accepted Jesus, right? That self was crucified. Mm -hmm. Yep. But a lot of us, a lot of us believers still have this relationship with this self. But that self is dead. And we're carrying around a dead self. Could you imagine walking around with a dead body? And that's what we do. We got this dead self that we're walking around with. And this dead self has so much control over us. So there, there is this aspect of the old self that, is being, that we need to deal with. 
because it always comes in conflict, in opposition to God's will. And nothing, nothing but God's will is going to be done. If it is not God's will, it is going to be havoc. Come with me to Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm looking at two verses there, 22 and 24 in the NIV. And listen to how Paul explained this about the old self. Paul explained it this way. You were taught with regard to your former way of life. He's talking about how we used to live before we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. To put off your old self. That is what we were taught, to put off our old self, which is being corrupted by its e deceitful desires. That old self, that old self that once controlled us is corrupted by evil desires. It's deceitful. It has all kinds of problems. That's not good. And he's saying that we need to put away this old self to be made new in the attitude of our minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So what is Paul saying here? He's saying that there are two selves, two selves that we have to deal with. We have to deal with the old self, which, the, which our old nature had, before God changes, us. We got to deal with that. And we got to get rid of that self because it's, it's causing us problems, right? And we have to put on the new self, which is what God wants to make us to become. All right. So, so let us look at how we do that. Okay. So in order for the new self to express itself, right, and function with its new life in Christ, we have to first get rid of the old self. If that old self is there, we're not going to be able to function the way God wants us to function. And putting off that old self is something that we have to do. You see pride? You know pride? Talk to me, somebody. What is pride? Enmity with pride. pride is enmity with God. Okay, that is just too high for Luton. And we need to break it down. What is pride? Pride is the old man. The what opposite is pride? of humility. The opposite the of, of giving us credit. Pardon me? Full of giving, ourselves. Our, giving up pompous, giving ourselves the credit. Giving ourselves credit for things that we do not we do not deserve any credit for. Right. We think we are something when we are not. Pardon me? We think in of ourselves more than we ought to. And that is what pride does. Pride causes us to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. Pride is saying, I did it for myself, so I, it I, is mine, right? And I don't care about anybody else. That is how pride operates. The opposite of pride is humility. Now, you know how God deals with the proud. He resists the proud. Mm -hmm. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And the humble is saying, Father, I know the breath I breathe comes from you. The food I eat, you provide it. There is nothing I have that you did. There is nothing good that I have that you did not give to me. Mm -hmm. Just getting rid of the old self. So when we say, not my will, when we say it's not my will, but it's God's will, we are putting off the old self. That's how we put off the old self. By saying, it's not my will. Let that self, old self, know that it is not our will. It is God's will. So it is the will of the old self that is holding us in bondage. And it is preventing our prayers from being answered. Right? And when we say God's will be done, then we are putting on the new self. 
And that new self is what we have to hold on to. Father, it is your will that has been done. That must be done. So that is how we're going to be changed or made into the new attitude of minds and be made free to access God's blessings is to understand that it is God's will. So notice something here. Let's let's look let's look at look, look at these examples here. If God were to answer all of the prayers of the old self, right? that all of us would pray you know what would happen if god would answer the prayers of the old self anybody want to take a, a shot at that if god were to answer the prayers of all of the old selves who would be praying the universe would be in chaos and here is a simple example a church is planning an outside event right and they're praying lord Please do not let it rain. In the meanwhile, a poor farmer's crops are withering from heat and he's praying, Lord, please send rain. We need rain. The question is, how is God going to answer both of those prayers? And here's where the rubber hits the road. The truth is, that God is not committed to answering either prayer unless it is the prayer of the new self which has announced or surrendered his own will to God's will. Now let us look at another example, another regular example. Two nations are at war with one another. And the Christians in each nation are praying, God give our nation the victory. How can God possibly do that? Because we notice that God is not committed to doing that. God is committed to answer, to answer the prayers of the new self. So God is not committed to catering to the old rebel, the old self, who just keep asserting himself rather than asserting the will of God. So when we are going to pray for anything, here is, here, is, here, is, here is what it is. When we are going to pray for anything, we need to begin by asking ourselves, very simple question, am I praying for this because I want it or because, or because God wants me to have it? The answer to that question makes a big, big, big deal in our lives makes a big difference in our lives. If it is because I want it, my prayers may not be answered. But if it is because God wants me to have it, to fulfill his purpose, then my prayers will be answered. Now, from time to time, right, we bring our, our petitions and our requests to God. And we're asking him to heal us of sicknesses or we're asking him to meet a financial need. And even in instances like these, Sister Vesper, where we're certain that it is God's will, we still must ask ourselves, am I praying for healing because I want to be healed to do my own thing? Or because God wants me to be healed to do his purpose? Am I praying for financial prosperity because I want to brag and boast about how wealthy I am? Or because it's what God wants me to have to fulfill his purpose and not mine? So can we begin to see here, sisters and brothers, that God is not going to answer our prayers based on our will. He has no commitment to answer our prayers based on our will. But now we can realize that our purpose to be alive right now, breathing the breath of life, is to be instruments of God's will, not ours. So we have to surrender our will to the Lord. Because as long as we're pressing for our will to be done, the will of God cannot come to pass in our lives. As long as we're trying to force our will through, we just don't leave any room 
for God's will. No room for God's will to be done. So when we start renouncing our own will, scrapping our own will, getting rid of it, and embracing the will of God, this is what happens. We bring three very important truths into mind. And these three important truths bring positive transformation to the believer. First of all, I'm sure we know that God loves us more than we can ever love ourselves. Second of all, God understands us better than we could ever understand ourselves. And third of all, God wants only the best for his children. So when we truly yield to God's will, we're going to discover what the Bible says and how we can prove what God's will is for us. We, we look at the scripture all the time, but this now has some real significance with the background understanding that we are here alive to do God's will. That's our, the only purpose why we're here. And we have to understand that because in the, in the beginning, God took us from the dust of the earth formed us in his image and likeness and breathed his breath into us. That is the only reason why we're able to sustain, to, to be alive and life is sustainable in us. And not only this life, but eternal life as well. And God started the whole process. We're just vessels. We're just instruments. No instrument ever made itself. No instrument ever played itself. No vessel ever made itself. And no vessel ever used itself. Yes, Sister Dia. Um, when Elijah prayed right, for the rain to stop, was that a selfish? Was it that of him? What was his purpose again? When he prayed for the rain to stop. Uh huh. Well, when, when, you mean when the when the drought started? In um. First King, I think it's First King seventeen when he prayed. Yeah, let's 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 let's, let's make sure that we get it in context. Uh huh. Um. Take it down. Elijah said to her, "As surely as the Lord lives, no rain or dew will fall during the next few years unless I command it." Keep reading. Don't stop there. Then he spoke his word to Elijah, leave this place and go east and hide near. Who um, spoke to Elijah? Then the Lord. Ah! So Elijah was only carrying out the Lord's command. Because he, he's, speak, he's stopping the rain and God, and God is, you read where, you read where, where he spoke, the rain, where he spoke and the rain stopped, right? Mm -hmm. And and then God is telling him where to go and how, where he's going to get pro protection while this drought is going to make life miserable for some people who are rebellious towards God. Mm -hmm. So Elijah was not acting on his own. No man has that power. You get it? Yeah, yeah. And and you gave the clue right there. So read the next verse. Um, I'll continue from where yeah. you were reading. Easter Jordan, you may drink from the stream mm -hmm. and then command ravens to bring you food there. Who is going to send the ravens? Um, God, the Lord. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So Elijah did what the Lord said. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm to correct raven east of Jordan and live there. The birds bought Elijah bread and meat every morning and evening, mm -hmm. and he drank water from the stream. Mm -hmm. Keep going. After, after a while, the stream dries up because mm -hmm. there was no rain. Mm -hmm. when the Lord spoke his word to Elijah, go to, I don't know what that is, and live there. I have commanded a, a widow there to take care of you. Okay then. 
So, so you see, everything that Elijah Very is cool. doing is based on God's word, which is his will? Yeah. Okay. And that is, that is the only how Elijah's prayer, my prayer, and your prayers will get answered. When, we, when our prayers are actually God's will. Okay. And any time we pray outside of God's will, it is going to be chaotic. Any time we function out of God's will, it is going to be chaotic. Adam and Eve experimented, Sister Vesper, outside of God's will. And they wiped out the entire human race. Jesus had to come to rescue us from the devil. The very reason why we're here tonight is because Jesus came and rescued us from the adversary. But now, now that we've accepted Jesus and we're no longer children of the adversary, Paul is saying here in Romans 12, 2, that we can prove what is God's will for us. So let us go there, Romans 12, 2. And I'm reading from verse 2. I'm reading just verse two, and be and do not be from verse two, and and do not be conformed to this world, he says. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. So how do we get transformed by the renewing of our mind? By getting rid of the old self. And the old self is those five senses that control our minds. Because our eyes are showing us things that are disastrous and things that are enticing. We're hearing, we're seeing, we're tasting. Our five senses are dominating our lives, controlling our minds. And whenever that happens, our spirit man, our spirit man is inactive. Because it, it is our spirit man, now as born again believers, that should be controlling us. It is our spirit man that should be controlling us. Because our new spirit man is now connected to the Holy Spirit. And that is where the control for our mind should be coming from. Not from what we see. Because faith is really interesting, you know. Faith... We, Faith is the evidence of things not seen, right? Is that right? So, so when our eyes are showing us what the world has to, has to offer, and the word of God is telling us something that is contrary or different or in opposition to what the world is trying to cause us to focus on, then we have a problem. So Paul is saying, no, 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 no. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Get your mind renewed. Get to know what is in your newborn again spirit. Right? So we must allow our newborn again spirit, which is controlled by the word of God and the Holy Spirit, to control our minds. That's it. That is what, what Paul is saying. But it, it continues to say that if we do that, this is so. This is, this, is, this is the latter part of the same verse. This is so that you may prove that you may prove that you may prove what the will of God is. And listen to what he's saying. It is which is good, number one, which is acceptable, number two, and which is perfect. So once we move away from the world to the word, we are going to be able to prove what the will of God is. And it is saying it is that which is good, number one, that which is acceptable, number two, and that which is perfect. So reverent submission, right? This first requirement of our study tonight means that Prayer, prayer, listen to me, sisters and brothers. Prayer is not a way for us to get God to do what we want. 
there is no such prayer for us to get God to do what we want. So when we say God's will be done and become God's instruments for God to do what he wants to do in us and through us for his purposes, then we are on the right track. This is when we will begin to see our prayers answered. And that is what we want to see happen. Now, let come with me to Hebrews, I'm sorry, Ephesians 3, 2, to, to see what Paul is saying here. Ephesians 3, chapter 2. And in a little while, I'm going to wrap up and, and, and get into discussion so that we could get this thing deep into our spirits. Ephesians 3.20, right? Now to him, we know the scripture, we memorize it. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we could think, no matter how big our imaginations are, he, God is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or even think. And it is according to the power that works in us. Remember earlier on we were saying that the entire kingdom has come and is resident in each believer? That's a lot of power, the kingdom of God. Okay, now let me, let me read how the NIV puts it. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us so god's ability to answer our prayers goes abundantly immeasurably beyond all we can ask or think now somebody might ask well how is that possible that god could go could answer beyond what we could ask or think right so how is that possible what could be beyond anything I could ask or think, or even imagine for that matter? And you know what the answer is? The answer is very simple. It is whatever God wants to do. It is whatever God wants to do, Sister Dear. You see, what God wants to do is far greater, far higher, far better, than anything we can imagine or think for ourselves. So as long as we limit God to doing what we want, we miss what God wants to do in us and for us. So in order to receive the best from God in our prayers, we have to come to God the way Jesus came, with reverent submission. We have to say, God, it is not as I will. It's not as I, Sister Sandra, will, but it is as you will. So we're saying, God, I am not praying to be healed because I want to be healed, to go do my own thing, but because I believe you want me to be healed for your purpose. So you know what is gonna happen, Sister Angeline? We're gonna be forced to hold on to our problems until we learn that God would heal us because he wanted us healed, not because we wanted to be healed, because he wanted us healed. So we need to bear this lesson in mind. So when we are praying with reverent submission to God's will, we are going to see our prayers answered. But only when we stop trying to impose our own will. And let's talk about reverent submission because next week we're going to talk about the requirement for prayer in faith, for faith in prayer. And I want us to understand, let's open up and talk about reverent submission to God's will. How are we supposed to be praying now? Sister Sandra, let's, let's try to get it so we could start putting it into practice. 
we're supposed to um 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 big up him just tell him how badly oh, that we magnify now, based, on what, based on what we've been studying let's let's i want us to focus i want us to focus 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 we don't want no generalization that's that's gonna hurt us okay so we have to we have to um let tell him that it's not what we want it's his what he wants for us um and that's so we go to him not with our will but that his will will be done in our lives so whatever it is that he has ordained for us that he should let it be done and as long as and, and and we're not praying for this for, for 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 our benefit but so that he can be glorified okay we're gonna get into the glorification piece later because that is a major 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 piece i mean we have so much going for us so much going for us right but the adversary has really slipped in some real crazy kind of stuff here where his people are saying command god to do this command god hmm. where did we get that power and authority so, so okay very very good sister sandra sister sister vespa your input on that yes it should be what god's will is for our lives we, like you said we're not we're we, we're praying because we think we we want to be here but does god want us here maybe maybe we we need to just wait on god wait on and and, and and his word study his word i've always read that that uh, romans um 12 2 and said um you know let, let, let the word change our minds and that what we think is a lot of us pray and i've seen it says pray until something happens and i'm always saying are we trying to break god's hand or are we just trying to you know we're trying to force god and we can't force god we just have to let his will be done in our lives and, and wait on him so, so wait on the lord and, and he will straighten us but but it is his will that we heal it is his will that we prosperous yes right yes but but the extension of that is that all of those things is not to fulfill our purpose either no but it is for his purpose yes but he wants us well he wants us healed he wants to answer our prayers and sister Dion went up went into a went on to a very good scripture there because we read in james that that elijah was just just like us yes the difference here is with elijah and and most christians and remember now that elijah and those guys did don't have what we have didn't have what we have are you aware of that they didn't have the holy spirit well, the living holy spirit, in them 24 yeah. 7. pardon me no that's what i was gonna say the holy spirit Go ahead, is, sister love. no i was saying the, the holy spirit wasn't available to them and uh, to uh like in their spirits to you know in their spirit to just when it's some time this the holy spirit will prompt you this is what I want if you really listen carefully. So, and you have to submit to whatever that prompting mm -hmm. is. Well, even in times of healing, God might be, you'll be praying, we know that we've been healed by his stripe, but God can use that situation to humble you, use the other situation. No, God doesn't, God doesn't humble us. And we don't want, ever want God to humble us. There's no yeah. scripture that say he humbles us. He tell us to humble ourselves. To humble ourselves. Humble yeah, yourself. Think, Don't let God I humble think, you. You can I handle it. I, I think I miss. Yeah. I just use the wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes God uses a situation, you know, to uh, help uh, quicken us, so. mature, so that, you know, you're not prideful. You can use a situation. And when you that patient, when the time you wait patiently for his word, you know, you, you learn to humble yourself. You learn that, look, you i'm not all there you have to submit to what, what, the, what, the, what does what does the scripture say about it what does god do for the humble uh, uh, god you know uplift the humble and just you know bring down the the prideful right yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, he me and he's telling us to humble ourselves. Yeah. He's, yeah. Not, he's not gonna do that for us. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, sister sister Monica. Our focus is on reverent submission, exactly what Jesus did, because we're getting that from Jesus' prayer in yeah. the garden, right? Where Jesus yeah. was going to go through the most difficult, difficult period of his entire life. And why is that that period so difficult? Is that he's now carrying the sins of the entire yeah. world. So, so even in the face of difficulties, you still worship him you uh believe in him you continue to give him the glory say this yeah is but we're God. focusing now will. we're focusing now on 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 reverent submission to god's will so let's stay in that narrow i want us to stay in that narrow narrow lane so reverent submission is is believe even in the face of difficulty you continue to believe and and say god it, this is this is your will believe his will is for you and you know that whatever is coming he is doing it for you because he loves you right but god ain't god ain't putting no disease on you because i love you and i, I hope we're not saying that no that no, no 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 in the face of difficulty we still okay, believe so who's, who's bringing the difficulty the adversary the adversary because the adversary brought all of the difficulties to job and it's god who took it off right you just okay. believe that god is with you just keep on praying keep on uh but believing they, they, keep your you faith notice going. that they too we, we're going to deal with the, the, that aspect of it next week but you you notice that there are two things connected here. Sister Bev, you were going to say something? Let me just make this, this point and then you come in. There are two things connected here to God's will. It is God's will and God's purpose. I was going to say respect. that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go, let, let Sister Bev go on. I come back, Sister Love, right after Sister Bev. Go ahead, Sister Bev. And then we, 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 we need to to um to humble ourselves before God because He knows best. He knows, you know, His His will is 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 right for us. So He knows all things. But well, we know what, what His we, we know what His will is. You know, we know His will. His word, yeah, yeah. But are we going to are we going to use God right to get our needs met to serve the devil? No, that can't happen no that no. is what the lesson is all about yeah go ahead sister sister love and then you sister dear yeah. so you know I, I, I was gonna say it tie with purpose something that with mission statement this is your mission so if this is the mission with the vision then the submitting to it then like if it's disease you submit unless you have a, you align with that vision and through the prompting of the holy spirit you know, the, you know that vision came clear to you, and you submit to it. So it, it can, it's a gray area if you if you're not aware of the vision and the mission. Well, let's 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 put the vision aside and focus on the will. on the mission and yeah, the and on the will on the will the yes. will of God. We're talking two different things. Let's focus on the will. I want us to focus on God's mm -hmm. will. But you know, also because we in the in the world, God's will is also it. There's no way you can know God's will. It's only through His word. So, yes. and, and it, there's no way. How, who can you know God's will? We know, you know God's will. His will yes. is that you prosper. You prosper yes. and be good. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. We know yeah. His will. And not but through the prompting yes. of the Holy Spirit. No, no, Holy no. Spirit. We know, Sister Love. Yeah. We know yeah. His will. We know God's will from His word. Yeah. yeah. There is no other way to know God's will but from His word. Okay. That's how so, we so. know God's will. Yeah. yeah. What we, what what we want to focus on, what we want to focus on is that we know God's will. But even though we know God's will, and we are because you see our will, and this is where our will is a, is a kind of kind of mm -hmm. craziness you know acknowledge to him that we know 
Yeah, we, we, we are saying, Lord, we know that you want us to heal us by your stripes. We are, by your stripes, we are healed. Yes, the word of God says that that's his will. But there's another piece to that. Yeah. yeah. God's, will, God's will is to serve his purpose through us. Yeah. And also, that's what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit, now because we are born again, we have the Spirit of God in us that will help us, enable us to know what our purpose that will is. If not, if we go by the general will that we are healed, so if we don't get that healing, we became, and we think that, oh, okay, I'm doing so, that's what I'm coming from. We think that I'm doing something wrong, and I am really, it's a privilege, that healing is a privilege to me. You know, that you just hold on to, not asking about the God will, because maybe God wanna do something through that uh, sickness or suffering, he wants to God, do something. God and does not use sickness to do nothing, Sister Love. God is using his word. And we need to focus on that. God's will is his word. Yeah. God's will is his word. God doesn't have to use sickness. Is the devil is the devil bring sickness on us because we're outside of God's will? And it is not every time that we're outside of God's will that the adversary would put sickness on us, but he's going to always, because Jesus told us that, that he's out there to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Okay, okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. But, but we know God's will through his, we just read that here. And that is why reverent submission is what we were focusing on. And reverent submission is saying, Father, every thing that i do right mm -hmm. everything that i do has to be you but for your will and for your purpose and the beneficiary is us okay look at your automobile can that automobile drive itself no no no, no. what bring me i've just because of time people other people uh interested go on is that for example the case of Anna, okay god close her womb because it's the cause with that people when you marry you get you know you multiply but okay look at what happened to hannah that prompt that's what i was saying god that did prompt, not close her womb sister love so the, the what, what happened if god what, closed what her bad? womb yeah, if I god closed her womb god was not going to reopen it yeah because when her will aligned because they want a prophet with, uh, with Samuel, that's how that's how we was interpret. Okay, let's leave it alone. I don't wanna. No, don't leave it alone. Don't yeah. leave it alone. Let's so, bring, it, so, so let's bring like, it in the open. Don't leave it yeah. alone. So I was just say, because God, it was for a reason. Her womb, you know, but temporary was because because of that, the jealousy of uh, uh what's his name, uh, the other woman, uh, prompt her she pray, and I believe by discernment of the holy spirit oh, that are not holy spirit that time because our holy ghost all by okay she was able to discern that a prophet is needed and say god i will give you this uh the child and after that she had five more children that's what you know that's that's what i'm that's what i'm alluding to oftentimes you know out of adversity and and our pain it's even though it might co not caused by us God will use that for us to seek his will, okay? I, I, I we pray and groan. Okay, okay. so so yeah. let's, okay, you hear what you're just saying? Yeah. So then, so then let, us, let us come to Abraham, the father of faith. You know where Abraham was when in God awe. called him? He was in awe. <laughs> yeah, about doing what? <laughs> Living in his father's house. <laughs> Doing what? It was not, it was just it was a pagan, you know, just feeding off, you know. He was world, it was an idol, idol worshiper. worshiper. Pagan. <laughs> an idol worshiper. Mm. And God called him and told him, Come follow me. God interacts with people in mm -hmm. in, in, in real adversarial situation and and bring them into the realm of faith the same thing with paul where was paul what was paul doing doing paul, what, paul didn't what, get no 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 unction paul was trying to kill christians mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and God called him. Jesus, Jesus knocked him off his, his horse, blinded him, and do all kinds of things to him. But 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 Paul was definitely kicking. You know what Jesus said? He was kicking against the pricks. Stood. <laughs> so God God has all kinds of wonderful ways to 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 operate to bring us into a relationship with Him. But when we come into a relationship with Him, where He becomes our Father, we need to know how to communicate with Him through prayer, so mm -hmm. that He answers our prayer. All fathers want to take care of their children. Children, yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you see what happened to the prodigal son? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God did not do that. He, he went to his father and said, give me my portion. That was his will. Mm -hmm. That was his will. Yeah. And when his will realigned with God's will, he went back home to his father and he lived happily ever after. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. God did not do nothing to that boy. That boy left his father and ended up in a pig pen. Mm. And that is what happens when we're not focusing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, we're not functioning in God's will. What time it is now? Okay, now, now, oh. now, now, now. so it's... when we're not functioning in God's will, we have a problem. It's chaos. It's chaos. We could get wiped out mm -hmm. and he woke up one day and said no i must go back i must go back home because my father wants me healthy my father wants me to enjoy his wealth remember you know he asked his father for 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 his portion and he gave it to him when his father gave him his portion they were good <laughs> right they were good <laughs> Okay, so somebody's raising their hand. Sister Jackson? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so when the father, okay, Sister Dion, go ahead. Last, yeah, last, yeah. So, this um, goes and we go to the communion. We pick it up next week where we're going to be dealing with the, 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 the other, another portion of the requirements. Go ahead. I, I believe um, Romans 12 um, to break it down for us. Perfect. So, here we are um we're dealing with two things we're dealing with confirm and transform me transfer so what about um here in order for us to like um reverence um submission to god's will we have to um we have to not be conformed to the things of this world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind and um spiritual transformation is basically our mind and our heart right so when our mind is dedicated to the word of god that's when we're going to be transformed to be able to see the will of god clearly and that is exactly what the verse is saying yes mm -hmm. we'll be able to prove it he says we'll be able to prove it prove yeah, it prove it yeah maybe to prove there's nothing what is there's good. nothing like having proof yeah what is good and acceptable and perfect will and like perfect yeah and i know god wants all of us healed i know he wants he wants nobody to perish that's his will right he wants nobody to perish but that everybody would have an eternal life has everybody accepted jesus christ no because they, they, they have not accepted his will So it's one thing to say, yes, it is the will of God that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Yes, the Bible said that. And that's his will, that we all would be healed. Just like none of us would perish, but all of us would come to repentance. That is his will. Right. But how is that will going to work? That is our focus. When we be transformed. Right, so that's that's the that's the reverent submission is to be able to say, and Father, it is not my will. It is your will, and I know your will for me is good. God has no bad will for his children. Everything that happens to us bad is the adversary puts it on us. 
not God. I mean, we might walk away from God and leave ourselves exposed so the adversary can, 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 can afflict us and affect us. But it's not God who puts anything on us. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from where? God. Did he say some? No. What did he say? Every. Every. All. <laughs> all perfect. Okay, Sister Love, you won't hear, but um, Sister Val didn't make it tonight because her husband is in the hospital. What? So we're going to ask you to... Who's doing communion tonight? Me. Okay, so Sister Love, could you just do a brief prayer and then Sister Diane for, for Sister Val's husband, Roy, who's in the hospital? Um. You're muted, Sister Love. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You're a God who answer prayer. Yeah. Father, we're talking about your will here. Father, we thank you. We all thank you, mighty God, for your perfect will for Brother Roy. You did it for my son. You know, this Friday he was it was a bad situation. And by your mercy, they gave him IV and sent him home. To this this morning again he had the same situation so i ask that god or the same god who had done it for me and my family today regarding my son will do the same for brother roy so our sister they will come home but i will give you all the praise but i will ask that lord let your will your perfect will whatever is given to our brother Play your perfect will of healing, whatever treatment, let it be your perfect will of that treatment or modality. And every caregiver there will align their will to give the proper medication. And may your peace, as your Prince of Peace, surround his, their room, whatever treatment, there be no misadventure and all glory we give good to you because after said and done people will realize there's a greater power and there is jesus father we thank you again and again for the privilege you've given us we give all all glory and honor to you in jesus name we have prayed amen 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 amen, amen. amen. okay sister dion amen father god we come before you tonight god and as we know, God, that communion is fellowship. Yes. So, God, as we fellowship with you tonight in breaking the bread, which is your body. Yes. Father God, we just want to thank you for the freedom that you have given unto us. So, God, as we partake, let us eat of the bread. God, as we continue in our fellowship, God, with the wine, Jesus, that represented your blood, mm -hmm. God, your word declared that as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of you. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that you have made on our behalf, God. We thank you, oh God, for the freedom that you have given to us. Our past, we have been freed from our past. We have been free, oh God, from every guilt and shame. Yes. Father, we have been free, almighty God. You were your word declared that who the Son of Man set free is free indeed. God, I pray as we drink this in remembrance of you, Father God, we mm. remember that you were wounded for our transgression yes. and you were bruised for our iniquity. So God, we are free. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are disease free, God. Yes, we Jesus. are God, we are poverty free in the mighty name of Jesus. So, God, as we drink this, we pray, Father God, as we give you thanks, Almighty God, for the freedom from every disease 
and germs and infection, everything, God, we give you praise and honor tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we give you praise. Let us drink in the name of Jesus and the glory of our Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. Um, Sister Judith, can you just close us out in prayer and remember me in your prayers? I'm traveling tomorrow. Sister Judith? Okay, Sister Judith is not. Okay. Hello? Hello? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. Close us out, please. Precious Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time that we have gathered together tonight to study your word. Yes. We give you praise, we give honor you glory, and, glory. and we give you honor. We ask your Lord Jesus, dear Father, continue your Father to study your word so we'll know what your will is in our lives. Yes. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, that you would go with us our separate ways tonight. A special prayer for Brother Joel as he travels, mm. traveling mercies, Lord, protecting your Lord from island to island that he'll be going, dear Father. Pray to your Lord that <clears throat> your guardian angels surround him. Yes. Your Father, and keep him in your perfect peace. Lord, we pray for each one on the line tonight. We pray for different circumstances or different issues that we are facing in our bodies. We ask your Lord that you heal and touch. will touch us from the crown of our heads to the fo- soles of our feet. Yes. You want us to be well so we can serve you. Hallelujah. Serve you with all our heart, our mind, our soul, and strength. Help us, dear Father, to put everything into perspective. Let Mm. us focus on you. Focus on the things of God. Focus on pleasing you. Yes. And obeying your command in your word. Mm. Bless us and keep us and make us a blessing. A special prayer for Sister Val and her family tonight. Bless and keep them and all those who are going through some illnesses right now. Satan, you are defeated. You are defeated. You are defeated. You are on our feet. Hallelujah. With Jesus in our vessel, we can smile at the storm. Mm. Keep our hearts and our minds stayed on you. Focus on you at all times. For you say you will be with us until the end of the age. Yes. Be with us tonight. Continue to bless us and make us a blessing and help us to love one another. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Can we just unmute and give God a thank give God thanks and praise for God his God. perfect will being done in our Thank you, Lord. 
Amen. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, y